Today on Cruise Man's Garage, we're going to install this dual USB power port onto my 2018 Honda Goldwing. Let's get started. Now you may have noticed that I have removed my middle cowl. Uh, that's because I'm working on a couple of other things. And when I decided to purchase this dual USB power port, I wanted to get one that had the voltmeter included because I think that's a handy little feature. Uh, I'll put a link in the description of this video where you can order this on Amazon. They're very inexpensive. I think it's like 15 bucks. And what I like about it, a couple things, it's an aluminum body. Uh, it has a rubber waterproof seal cap, which is nice. Now, of course, when you're riding, if you were riding in the rain um, and you had something plugged into this USB, it's obviously not going to be waterproof because USB connectors are not waterproof. So you'd want to unplug whatever you're using and then Put the rubber seal cap back on just to prevent any damage. Now normally on, um, on these power ports, the Honda power port, which is a cigarette lighter style power port, which I never would use, uh, mounts up here just above the parking brake lever on the DCT model. And um, to do that, you have to take off a few more pieces, which I don't really want to do today. Uh, I just, you know, I can't get back up in here. You, maybe you could do it, but it'd be very difficult to do without removing this piece here or removing the top shelter. So I'm going to kind of cheat a little bit. I'm not going to go to that much trouble today. I'm just going to mount this underneath the brake lever. So unfortunately, that would make it hard for me to see the voltmeter when I'm riding. I probably won't be able to see it while I'm riding. Uh, but later on, if, you know, next time I'm doing my air filter or some other function on the bike that I need to remove the top shelter or remove this uh, side piece, um, then I will install it up here above, above the brake lever. And you say, well, but then you're going to have a hole down here, you know, under the brake lever. I can, I can use a, a plastic plug. This is a 30 millimeter hole that we're going to drill for this power plug. And I can always buy a 30 millimeter plastic plug to just plug that hole so it will look, you know, pretty factory. It won't look bad. Or I could just leave this power port and install another power port if I wanted to. Nothing says you can't have two. I, I don't know why I would need four USB ports, but, you know, you could do it. The wire that comes with this actually does have a fuse. Uh, I'll probably cut these connectors off because they might be a little too large. What I'm going to do today is I'm just going to go ahead and wire these to my accessory terminal on the fuse block because that's a quicker install for me. All I have to do is take off my side cover here. I can route these wires back around here to that fuse block pretty easily. And later, later, once I have the seat off and I'm doing some other work, I can always route these wires up to my WAGO connectors and my junction box on the accessory terminal. But for now, I'm just going to connect it to the accessory terminal on the fuse block. So, no reason to keep talking. Let's just get started. So my goal is to install this port or this power port about right in this area right here. And I would like to sort of have it centered probably just under this. I'm, I'm really going to eyeball this. I don't know that measuring is going to make a huge difference. It looks like we're about uh, 13 centimeters thereabouts is the width from here to here. And it looks like in the center of this... Uh, it's probably about eight centimeters up here. So maybe at about the, the four centimeter mark, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a mark right here using a pick. I'm just going to use this little pick here and I'm going to decide on a spot right here. I've got to make sure there's no obstructions behind here. There is a mounting tab back here so I want to make sure I'm over far enough to where it's not going to interfere with that 
and I'm going to make a mark and then once I make that mark I'm going to use a small drill bit to drill a pilot hole and then we'll drill our 30 millimeter hole. So let's get started with that. I'm actually just going to kind of eyeball this because I just want it to kind of be probably right in this area right here. So there's my mark, and I'm going to start my drill from there. This plastic is very soft. So now I've got my step bit installed on my Bosch drill. Great drill, by the way. And I'm going to begin drilling through. And I, want to, I need to make sure I've got enough room for that bit. It's a pretty long bit. I don't want to hit my engine or anything else back there because this thing goes back pretty darn far, but I think I'm okay. This bit goes up to 32 millimeter and my hole is supposed to be 30 millimeter. I'll probably stop at 28 just to check and make sure everything's where we want it. These things, these step bits, cut through this type of plastic. They just cut through like butter. They really do a great job. So I'm going to go slow. You can see how easily, and it makes just a beautiful hole. Really does a nice job. I just want to make sure that I'm not going through any... i got plenty of room back there for my bit. So now we're up to about, I don't know, let's see, on the bit we're probably at about... 18. Keep going. Just kind of cleaning off some of these shavings as I go. And I want to make sure I'm checking back here to make, I'm checking behind to make sure I'm not going to hit anything with this bit because there are some other things back here and I may have to go to a different bit. Because I don't want to accidentally drill into something here. It looks okay right now. Okay, we're... I think we're at about 28. just want to make sure... that this won't fit. Yeah, it's still a little... Just want to make sure that I'm not going to hit something back here. And it's getting pretty close. And that's pretty... I think that might... That might be 30. Let me look. Yes, I believe it'll go in now. Maybe a little tight, but I think I can get it to go in. Let me just make sure I've got it reamed out. Now we want to unscrew this mounting base because that's going to go underneath to hold this in place. And this is how it's going to mount once I've got it in. It's just going to be a... I'm just going to work it in. I'd rather have it too tight than too loose. Ah, there we go. That looks that looks really good there. And I want to turn it just about like that so that when we unplug it, it looks good. Now let me show you what it looks like from underneath. So you can see it sticking through here. Here's our two contacts. We're going to run our wires 
up, you know, back behind this, uh, this right here, no problem. But we are looking good right now as far as where that is going to mount. Okay, all I'm doing here is I'm just going to install this little retainer ring. This threaded ring slips over the back of this uh, power port. And I'm just going to kind of screw it on into place. Just takes a second to get it started here. It's a little fiddly. There we go. And that just kind of screws onto the back of this just to hold it in so it doesn't slide around. It's a pretty tight fit. I think I drilled the hole just slightly smaller than 30 millimeter. So it's not going to go anywhere, but doesn't hurt to, uh, you know, do it correctly. Now I'm just hand tightening this. It doesn't have to be super tight. I'm not sure if you can see that little locking ring right there. It's just butted up next to this plastic panel. So what we have here next to the batteries, we have our fuse box and Honda provides you with these accessory terminals. These are switched terminals. So they only are active when the motorcycle is turned on. And this green wire is actually going to my Pathfinder uh, accessory hub. This black wire, the ground, is actually not even being used right now. Um, it was an old wire I was using for something else. I'm going to go ahead and remove it. As you can see, it doesn't do anything. It was just a wire hanging out there. It was time to remove that anyway. And we will now install, these are the wires from the power hub. So I'm going to install these connectors. This is the ground. We'll install first. Yeah, it's probably going to bend that little tab there because it's a little bit large, but that's okay. And this one the same way. I'm going to I'm going to put this new connector on top of the power accessory hub connector. This is also has a fuse on it. Probably doesn't need it, but it has it. So it doesn't hurt to have an extra fuse just for protection. It's going to be tight getting the cap back on is the issue. Um, I actually even notched out this cap a little bit just to accommodate things like this. And I may have to notch it out just a little bit more. There we go. Now it's on there. And then these for now, are just going to get tucked up under this panel. When I remove my top shelter, I will do a better job of routing these wires. There's just enough play to get up under here and route these wires where they need to go. And they'll stay out of the way until we are able to get in there later on and do some better uh, routing. Now I did look at this power port before I installed it. You can, you probably can't see it in the video, but there is a little minus sign on this side and a plus sign on the other side. So I know that the black wire goes closest to the outside of the bike. This is the red. That's going to go on the inside. Uh, tab. I'm going to try to slip these little rubber covers over. And this is the ground, which is where the black wire goes. And we're going to slip that little rubber cover. If I can get it to flip around here a little bit. Just gives it a little bit of extra protection. There we go. 
so now we're hooked up. We're wired to the accessory terminal. Let's turn the bike on and see if it works. Okay, the bike is turned on, and as you can see, we do have a voltmeter. Let's start the bike. Okay, that looks pretty good. Looks like our alternator is putting out enough. I'm going to have to do a little better job of hiding these wires, obviously. And I'll get that done off camera. And we have our two USB power ports right here. I'll test those out here in just a little bit, make sure they're working. I have a Cena headset here that hasn't been charged in quite some time, so I'm hoping that I can test with with this, I'm going to just plug this into the um, one of my connectors here, and on the other end, I've got a USB-C, and I'm going to plug that into the back of this Cena connector or this uh, Cena headset. I keep saying Cena, I meant Cena. So now, if I get a charge light when I turn the bike on, we'll know that this USB port is charging. So let's turn the bike on. As you can see, it does light up. Actually, it is fully charged, believe it or not. But I am getting a blue light, which indicates there is power. Let's plug this into, and I'll unplug it here. You can see the light goes out. I'll plug it into the top connector. Hmm. Actually goes the other way. And we do get the light again. So my USB ports are working. My voltmeter is working. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this video today. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you like videos like this. And if you click that little bell icon, YouTube will let you know when we come out with new videos. So I will put links to this power port in the description of this video where you can get this through Amazon. And like I said, it's about 15 bucks. It was very easy to install. Probably take you about 30 minutes to install at the most. You do not have to take off the middle cowl to do this. You can get access to this with the middle cowl still installed. The only thing you, you would need to remove is your little outer deflector. But that's a, a simple thing to remove. You can get access to this area and very simply route the wires like I did temporarily. Once you remove this panel or the top shelter, you can then route correctly. But it's a very quick, easy install if you go to the fuse box accessory terminal like I did. Thanks for watching today. I'll see you on the next Cruise Man's Garage.